Here is the latest from K2 Radio News. A Gillette woman who went missing on Saturday was located yesterday at 4.22 p.m. Tammy Sturgeon's body was found about 1.8 miles from where she was reported missing near a ravine. This is for the Campbell County Sheriff's Office. Search and rescue efforts located gloves and a cigarette butt in the area just prior to locating the body. No foul play is suspected and cause and manner of death will be determined by the Campbell County Coroner. The Campbell County Sheriff's Office has thanked all surrounding counties, including Natrona, for aid in this investigation. The Evansville Fire Department was able to quickly knock down a fire coming from the back of a home in the area of 4th at Evans Street last night just after 8.20 p.m. An investigator with the Natrona County Intra-Agency Fire Investigation Task Force and investigator from the Evansville Police Department responded but have not yet said what caused the fire. K2 Radio left a message with the Evansville Police Chief and will update if more information is released. No injuries were reported as a result of the fire and crews remained on scene for an extended period of time looking for hot spots and assisting with the investigation. Anyone with information about the fire is asked to call investigator Marin with the Evansville PD at 307-231-1270. The Wyoming Department of Corrections announced today that by the end of the year they'll be closing the aquaculture program at Wyoming's women's prison in Lusk. The program opened in 2007, fish farming tilapia for the market, and when the fish were grown they were shipped to North American Fishery in Benford, North Dakota for distribution to grocery stores in the region. This enables inmates to make a small hourly wage comparable to other prison programs program grew and most recently was being used to grow tilapia and catfish for the Wyoming Game and Fish Department. The facility costed nearly $400,000, which was allocated from the Wyoming Department of Corrections budget. Revenue from the program was supposed to help sustain the operations. The Department of Corrections cites staffing issues as the issue with keeping the program going. and They say they, they're going to expand other vocational opportunities for inmates that will be affected by the closure. Those in need of a hot meal or those seeking to be with others are always welcome to dine at the Wyoming Rescue Mission. Breakfast at 6.30 a.m., lunch at noon, and dinner at 6 p.m. any day of the week, 365 days a year. Except this Easter weekend, they do have a special schedule. They had a lunch today at 11 a.m., and they'll have dinner tonight at 5 p.m. And tomorrow, the same schedule applies. It'll be 11 a.m. and 5 p.m. Meals are paid for with generous donations from the community. If you would like to donate to cover the cost of someone's meal, you can go to wyomingmission.org. Data from the U.S. Census Bureau's Household Pulse Survey found that nearly one in eight Wyoming children live in hunger every day. One in seven adults sometimes do not have enough to eat. For some, worrying about food happens daily. The Wyoming Rescue Mission seeks to provide hope, starting with a hot plate. For this holiday weekend, I was able to find a rare photo of a Wyoming warden's children on Easter in the early 1900s. It's from the Wyoming State Archive, and there are four of the Alston children, and they're holding little baby bunnies. The photo was undated, but it's presumably from the early 1900s, maybe around 1910. Their father, Felix Sr. Alston, has been the subject of many books and stories. In the early 1900s, he became warden of the state penitentiary in Rollins. Records show that he came up with the idea to let convicts on death row, some who had not been outside in a decade, play baseball. He asked his friend, Joseph Carey, the then governor of Wyoming, for permission. Carey sought as a chance to make some money, and he allowed a team to be formed. They were called the Death Row All-Stars. The archives also have a photo of the team with Felix Jr. front and center. The four-year-old was made the team mascot, and he's sitting in the middle of murderers and rapists with a smile on his face. The Wyoming Supply Company agreed to play against the convicts in the first game. If the inmates won, time would have been shaved off their sentence, and if they lost, time was to be added. Fourteen months after the team was formed, they were shut down. They ended their career with four wins and zero losses. You can read more and see those pictures at k2radio.com. Reporting from Casper, this is Colby Fido.